Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new tutorial today and I'm so glad you're here again. I'm excited to be participating in another YouTube hop with some of my very talented friends. This hop is called Winter Magic and all the projects are based on winter themes. Could be the colors, it could be anything that basically inspires us. There's so many sponsors and over 50 prizes to be won. All you have to do is like and comment on each of the videos and subscribe to the channels. The hop runs between December 20th and January 4th, so you have all the winter holidays to watch all the videos as there's so many artists and so much inspiration to be seen. I created an altered vintage snowflake. This is a wooden shaped snowflake I got at the dollar store and it has wooden planks dividing it, but it's cut in the shape of a snowflake. And I thought I could do a nice winter themed project with that. I have a really nice picture of myself right when it was snowing last year and I'm covered in snow and it's just a perfect picture to add to this project. I wanted to create a vintage theme to this, so I added a lot of rusty elements along with the nice bluish colors that are so common in winter. The first thing I did is I took some paper texture paste and one of the Finnabare stencils and I added some texture to the background. I applied it randomly in certain areas just to make sure that I have that texture in the background. Then once it was dry I took some corrugated cardboard and ripped it into long pieces and glued it to the background. I used 3D matte gel to glue this to the background because I knew that the gel would hold this really well. I like using matte gel just because it's not shiny and it dries clear so you don't see all the different glue pieces that are left usually in projects. I glued a few of the cardboard pieces onto the background to create that really nice texture that you see in the back. Then to add even more texture, I took some lace that I had in my stash and I cut it into different pieces so I could glue it to the background. I used the same gel to glue the different pieces to the background and I kind of glued them in smaller pieces but also in different directions so you would really get a lot of texture in all areas of my project. I heat set this really well because you have to make sure that the gel is completely dry before adding any other medium on top. Then I took some heavy white gesso and I gave the corrugated cardboard and the lace a coat of white gesso. I wanted to make sure that you don't see the brown color in the back that you only see the texture and it's all white. That way when I'm spraying it I have an even coat on everything. This is what I love about gesso that it covers everything and it makes all the texture in the background have the same even coat so that way it's prepared for any type of medium you put on top of it. Once I covered all the textured elements I wanted to go back and add some diluted gesso on the wooden part of the background. So I took the white gesso, put it on my mat and then sprayed it with a little bit of water. Then I gave the wood areas a light coat of white gesso. That way I had it primed for when I have to add the other mediums and the sprays. I heat set to this area really really well because I was going to be working with paper and I wanted to make sure that it didn't get messy or wet. I took my photo which I printed on a small sprocket which makes the picture quite small and it's perfect for this type of project and I used one of the new Art Daily clips from Finnabear and I knew that I was going to keep it in that color which is a rusty color and I grabbed also a couple of papers from the, a new collection called Poetic Rose and that way I could layer them behind the photo. It almost looked like the clip was holding a bunch of papers. Then I took some of the vintage snowflakes mechanicals from Prima and added them in different areas of the page. 
the big snowflake I actually cut in half so I could add it in two separate areas and then I took the other ones and I just added them to create some movement and more texture on the page. These really helped create that really nice winter theme. I also grabbed some acorns and some pine cones which I had from an old collection from Prima. These are resin, pine cones and acorns. However, I'm not sure if they're still available for sale, but you could really use any type of embellishment here. You could use chipboard, which is probably the easiest thing to find. And you could even get some chipboard snowflakes and chipboard pieces like acorns and winter themed embellishments. Once I placed everything, I removed my picture and the clip from the center and carefully glued all the embellishments in the exact spot where I had them because I knew I wanted to put that clip at the end but I needed to make sure that everything is glued and covered. So once everything was glued again with the 3D gel I was able to move on to the next step. For these type of projects you have to work in layers and you have to heat set each layer really well especially if it's gel. So I heat set it really well and then I took my white gesso again and covered just the snowflakes. So I went ahead and covered the snowflakes and even added a small coat on the resin pieces as well. That way it created an even coat again and everything blended into the background. The nice thing about it is that everything blends in and then you bring out the textures when you add more color to the background. I heat set the white gesso really well as well and then I was ready to add some color. The way I added colors is with sprays and I actually created my own sprays using mica powder. I created a few colors. The one I'm showing you how I'm doing is called cobalt blue and all I do is I take an empty Prima bottle and add a bunch of mica powder into it. This is blue mica powder and the color is cobalt and all I do is I put a few spoonfuls of it at the bottom of my bottle and then I add water to it and that creates a really nice mixture and a very bright shimmery spray. Make sure you shake it side to side so the mica doesn't get clogged inside the tube. I also created other colors that I used as well in this project like a lighter blue, some teal and even a white as well. And they are so easy to make and so versatile. These mica powders, which of course I'm listing below, are super versatile to use for different projects and you can use them in so many different ways. So first I started with the light blue and also the white. So I decided to use the white as a lightning color, but because it has a shimmer, it gave a beautiful luster to the background. It's hard to see in this video how shimmery everything turned out, but the white really helped do that. And all I did is just spray the different colors and mix them around and move the snowflake up and down to have everything mixed together. With these sprays, it's also important to work with layers as well. So it's nice to add one color, mix it with another, and then let it dry and then add more color afterwards. So I heat set the first layer which is really light because the blue and the green were light and I also whitened it a little bit with the white spray. But then I decided to add some of the darker cobalt blue that I had made. So here I am adding it and you can see how dark it is but I do take the white and I mix it together with it and it really makes a difference. It creates a beautiful color in the background and because there's gesso underneath, it really blends everything nicely. You can also use water to blend the colors and dilute them, and that really helps to create to bring all that texture out into the surface. I added more colors as well, like the teal and the cobalt blue, and kept on adding back and forth until I was happy with the results. While the sprays were still wet, I went ahead and took some of my rust paste. This is the Prima Finabear rust paste. And I love adding this while things are wet because it tends to dilute into the spray and creates a really nice rusty look. 
I took a small paintbrush and started adding the rust in between the embellishments. I don't want to add it on top of the embellishments, but more underneath. That way it creates that rusty look as if it's coming out of each embellishment. If you look at rust, it usually comes out of edges of things, doesn't really rust on top of things unless the whole thing is rusted. Like if an object is rusted everywhere, then it's rusted. But if it's just beginning to rust, it usually rusts at the edges of things where water accumulates. So that's the look that I was going for here as well. So I used water to dilute the rust paste and to add some more in different areas. That way it would blend into the background. I really wanted to mimic the color of the clip and I kept on bringing the clip back and forth just to make sure that I was putting the rust in the right place because there was no point in putting it underneath the area where the clip and the papers were because that was going to be hidden by the photo. So I wanted to make sure that it was coming out of the bottom and the sides of the paper clip holder. I heat set the rust paste really well and then I took the paper clip with the other papers and added a small piece of corrugated cardboard underneath the photo. That added a really nice vintage touch to the layout. Then I took some Distress Oxide ink from Tim Holtz. This is the vintage photo color and I just added a little bit of that color and also the rusty hinge color which is a bit of an orange color to the edges of my papers. That way it matched the rest of the background. I placed the bundle of papers with the photo in the center and then I took some of the gel and glued it to the background. I also went back and added this small double acorn resin piece and glued it on top of the bundle of papers. Then I took the white gesso again and using a paintbrush I started adding it in certain areas in the background. I wanted to bring some of that white light to the embellishments and also to the texture. So by adding it on top of the corrugated paper and on top of the snowflakes and the different textures, it really brought them to light and it blended everything and created a cohesiveness to this project. I also added some white paper texture paste. I love adding this type of texture on top of winter themes because it really makes it look like snow is accumulated at the edges of the embellishments. So the gesso helps to bring that white light, but the textured paste really helps bringing all that texture and the snow-like effect to the background. I cut out a word from one of the papers that says blessed. I edged it with some of the vintage photo ink and then I stuck it underneath the acorns on top of the photo. It really helped bring everything together. I took some Nuvo Glimmer paste and using my finger I added it in certain areas of the snowflake. You can't really tell that it's there but when you look at close-ups of the snowflake you can really see that glitter that I added in certain areas. But it's really hard to see in the video but it really added a beautiful glimmery touch. I went back with some of the rust paste and added a little bit more rust underneath the photos to really emphasize how vintage and rusty I wanted it to look. So I just added a little bit more in certain areas and that brought in a little bit more of that rust look that I was going for, especially because I really wanted to match that clip that I had added with the photo. Then I took two small vintage mechanical butterflies from Finnebar and I glued them to the background. They added the perfect touch to surround the photo as well. And I also added a little bit of white gesso to them at the edges so they would blend in with the rest of the background. Finally, I took one of the new Art Daily stamps from Finnebar and grabbed all the little stamps that have quotes on them. And using some of the vintage photo ink, I went ahead and stamped around the snowflake to add a vintage distressed look to the background. I really wanted some of these messages to surround the photo and they're really nice quotes so it's nice to just have them 
surrounding the area. So I just went around stamping them. It really added to that vintage rusty look. And once I finished stamping, I took a baby wipe and just patted it on top of all the stamped areas to have the ink blend into the background and make it look more distressed. So I didn't want it to be as crisp. I wanted it to be more distressed and blend into the background. And that helped really make this whole vintage winter theme stand out. I also took the vintage photo ink and just edge the snowflake all around. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. If you want to participate in our giveaway, just watch all the videos and hop along from one to the other between December 20th and January 4th. All you have to do is just like our video, comment on them, and then subscribe to our channels. Hop along to the next video here above. Have a wonderful day. Bye.